Asia. And I'm Key. And welcome to the History Channel, where we will be talking about the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution was a time period where a lot of manufacturing processes were made. It started in 1760 and ended around 1840. During this time, many improvements were made and new inventions as well. It was also a time period of transition. And by transition, I mean from doing a lot of hand work to now having machines that would do them for us. The growth of the Industrial Revolution depended on the ability of transporting raw materials and transporting goods over long distances. There were three types of transportation that increased during the Industrial Revolution. Waterways, roads, and railroads. Transportation was important because people were starting to live in the West during these time periods. Transportation via water was the cheapest way to move heavy products such as iron and coal. As a result, canals were widened and deepened to allow more boats to pass. Robert Fulton made the first steam-powered engine to power a steamboat. In 1807, he demonstrated it by, by going to New York and to Albany via the Hudson River. His steamboat was able to carry goods across the Atlantic Ocean by the mid-1800s. Roads also immensely improved in this time. People usually traveled by foot, but there were problems with the conditions of the roads. Turnpikes were created in 1755 for easier transportation, especially for horse wagons. John McAdams made McAdam Road surfaces, which consisted of crushed rock and thin layers. Thomas Telford made new foundation and road using large stones. In 1807, Richard T. made the first steamboat locomotive. These improvements on waterways, roads, and railroads all made traveling safer, and it allowed goods to be moved more efficiently. Another important ordeal that came along in the Industrial Revolution is crop rotation. Back in the 18th century, farmers would plant their crops and would wait for them to grow, and when they were done growing, they would crop them. When the time came to plant another Crop, they would plant the same crop in the same place. They, oh, this created a problem because nutrients was being taken away. If you plant the same crop in the same place repeatedly, it kills the soil and takes away all the nutrients. This was a problem that needed to be handled, which was handled by making crop rotation. Crop rotation is when you plant a crop in the same spot for one year and the next year plant it in a different spot the next. This keeps the nutrients up and kills the soil and doesn't kill the soil. You will plant different crops in the same spot until the plant, I don't know, I don't know. By using crop rotation, farmers can keep the fields under continuous production and instead of letting them lie fallow, as well as reduce the need for artificial fertilizers, both will which be very expensive. As general effect of crop rotation is that there is a geographic mixing of crops which can slow the spread of pests and diseases during the growing season. Another benefit of yielding and rotation crops is that it increases in crop growth during the rotation. Other benefits of rotation cropping systems include production of cost advantages. Overall, financial risks are more widely distributed over more diverse production of crops and or livestock. Crop rotation was also created to control pests and diseases that can become established in the soil over time. The changing of crops in a sequence tends to decrease the population of level of pests. By regularly changing the planting location, the pest cycles can be broken or limited. For example, the root knot nematode is a serious problem for some plants in warm climates and sandy soils, where it slowly builds up to high levels in the soil and severely damages plant productivity. Well, that's all from us this time. See you next time. Have a great day of learning.